Um, ladies and gentlemen, this word problem, what it states, all right, is it says forces with the magnitudes of 125 newtons and 300 newtons act on a hook. The angle between the two forces is 45 degrees. Find the direction and magnitude of the resultant of these forces. So we want to find the resultant vector, right? You have a force that's pulling something this way, and you have a force, or here's like a hook, right? So on this hook, you have two forces. You have a force going 45 degrees above the horizon, and then you have a force going directly this way. So they said find the resultant vector. What that means is we want to see where is exactly that force being pulled between those two. So if we're just going to kind of look at adding these two up, you're going to look at roughly that would be your resultant vector, right? Remember we did worked on vector addition? So your resultant vector is going to probably look something like this. All right? But we don't really know because here I'm pushing at 300 newtons, and here I'm pushing at 120 newtons. So it's not going to be an exact perfectly addition, but we need to see exactly how this resultant vector is going to work. All right? So we know we need to find a vector that is going to be pulled between those two. And then what we'll do is we'll look at where exactly that degree, how far, which would be the magnitude, right? And then the direction up that is being pulled. So what we need to do then is we need to determine what is the direction and the magnitude that's being pulled for each one of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a name. I'm going to call this vector u and this vector v. All right. Now last class, we talked about how we can describe vectors as linear combinations in terms of their angles. So one thing we looked at is we said um, u, let's just do vector u, can be rewritten as, if you guys remember this, cosine of theta i plus sine of theta j. Actually, let's do it. Let's do w. Right? You guys remember that? We talked about that. Remember we looked at the unit circle and we said x was cosine, y was sine. So what we did is we said we can create a linear combination. We're trying to find the direction of a vector. We can use this as a linear combination. Then what we talked about is, well, what if I had a magnitude of my um, vector u? What if I knew what that magnitude was? Well, if I knew what that magnitude was, then what I do is I'd multiply that magnitude by each one of these. All right. So we look at this, and let's look at vector u. Do we know what the magnitude of vector u is? Well, it tells us in the problem. It says the magnitude is, 125, is 120 newtons, right? And it says the direction that it's being pulled is 45 degrees. So we're going to plug that information into our vector for u. So I'll say u equals 120 times the cosine of 45i plus 120 times the sine of 45j. Sorry? What? In the problem? Really? Oh, yeah, you're right. OK. All right. Does everybody have any questions or what I did with that? Now, that vector is including its magnitude, and I'm including the direction of it. OK? So then, let's go and take a look at v. v is going to be the same thing. I'm not going to spend as much time going through it. Do we know the magnitude of v? Yes. What is going to be the direction, the angle, though, of this? Well, this angle is going 45 degrees off of this. But what would be the angle of this? If it's going directly due east, directly horizontally, the angle would be 0. Exactly. So we have 300, um, 300 cosine of 0 degrees. I guess I should probably put my degrees there. Cosine 0 degrees i plus 300 um, sine of 0 degrees j. All right. So we can now kind of uh, evaluate a little bit. 
All right, so here we have u equals 125 cosine of 45 is square root of 2 divided by 2 i plus 125 would be, um, and then sine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 divided by 2 j. Right? So cosine of 45 degrees, square root of 2 over 2. Sine of 45 degrees, square root of 2 over 2. Right? You guys remember that unit circle? Let's go over here. What's the cosine of 0? Cosine of 0 is 1. So therefore, v equals 300i. And the sine of 0 is 0. So therefore, we're not going to have a vector in the j coordinate. We're not going to have a vector in j coordinate. And let's look at that. Does that make sense? Is this force, is that being applied vertically at all? No, it's a straight horizontal force, right? And remember, the unit vector i deals directly on the x-axis, where j deals directly on the y-axis. So since this force is being directly applied horizontally, there is no force i. However, here, you can see there is a force vertically and horizontally. That's why in this component we have an i plus j. Wait, didn't you say there's no force j? Like for this vector, for yes, for this vector there's no force going vertically. It's straight horizontally. So the only unit vector we're using is i. It's only 300, it's only 300i. There's no, j, there's no force going vertically. It's a direct pull horizontally, right? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, if we want to find this vector, right, this resultant vector that I sketched up there, this represents the addition of this plus that, right? So what we need to do now is do u plus v. So we need to add these two vectors. So therefore, that's going to get 125 square root of 2 over 2i plus 300i. And then plus 125 square root of 2 over 2 j. Sorry. All right, so now I'm going to kind of combine these two and uh, just work with uh, getting some decimals because I'm just going to find their value. So I have 125 times the square root of 2 divided by 2 plus 300. So I have 388.339i uh, plus 88.39. All right. That's not the answer, because the answer, that is now the component form of this vector. So I need to go over 388.39 and then up 88.39. That's the component form of the vector. Or this is the linear combination we can write in component form. But what they're asking is, what is the magnitude? right? So we'll call u plus v. Let's call that, um, let's call that w. Okay? So if I want to find now the magnitude of w, or yeah, let's actually call it z, because I already have a w up there. So if I want to find the magnitude of z, what that means I need to do 388.39 squared plus 88.39 squared and take the square root of that, right? The magnitude is your, is your um, z1 plus z, z1 squared, or the square root is z1 squared plus z2 squared. So now in my calculator, I do 388.39 square it plus 88.39 squared. Then I take the square root of second answer, and I get a magnitude of 398. Point three two. That means, ladies and gentlemen, the length of this vector is 398.32, or I'm sorry, not the length, but also the force of that vector is 398. And does that make sense? If you're pulling something with 300 pounds of force, and then you're out, somebody else is pulling at 45, do you think that resultant vector is going to be stronger? Right? Your, your final force on that is going, to be, is going to be the sum of these two vectors, which in turn is going to end up being 398. All right. 
Then we need to find the angle. And remember, when we were looking at, when we talked about this, we said that the angle of your vector, tangent of theta, ends up equaling b over a. Or you could also commonly do it as v2 over v1. In this case, it's going to be z2 over z1. Right? So what we'll say is tangent of theta equals 88.39 divided by 388.39. Then theta, the angle of this resultant vector, equals tan inverse of 88.39 divided by 388.39. So now we just figure out that. So I do inverse tangent of 88.39 divided by 388.39. And I get 12.8 degrees. So theta equals 12.8 degrees. So therefore, this angle is going to be 12.8 degrees. OK, so now we know the direction and the magnitude of our resultant vector. The main important thing, guys, is when you're dealing with your vectors that include angles and their magnitude, we got to make sure we write our linear combination with that form so we can make sure we can include the angle of each one. All right? And that's it.